Hey everybody, it's Gavin Syme. Hope you guys are having a good day. If you caught my video last week, I showed some of the new curve features and how we could use them in Lightroom. And if you didn't check that out, I'll put a link in the comments. But I took the information from that, the techniques that I showed you about how we can use curves in our masks and layers specifically, and I put that into more speed masks for users of my elegant speed mask presets. And I'm gonna show you today how to use those and what I did and how they can be effective, but I'm also gonna show you uh, just the concept here. So if you make your own speed masks, that's fine, and you can do this in your way, because this is far and away the best way to use masks, because you can build in the mask here, and you can build the mask mask here, but then you have to manually apply a local adjustment preset, adjust your sliders. It's far more efficient, as I've showed you in a lot of the videos, to build speed masks. So you can use ones like mine, or you can build your own. You'll notice here that in 4.6, I've done a bunch of updates with these new A1. Now, these are these kind of one mask speed masks. If you use my masks, you know that you can build all these masks now in Lightroom, where it separates lips and eyes and skin and all that kind of stuff. And that can be super useful. However, one pro tip to remember with masking and layers, whether it's in Lightroom or in Capture One or in Photoshop, wherever you're doing that kind of work, is you can keep stacking up and stacking up and improving, but you can also start getting an unnatural look. Sometimes I just want a simple single mask. So here I have this pretty harsh lit scene, but it's a really cool photo. We clearly need to dial things back a little bit. I'm gonna go to this new Nature People Easy Sunlight. I could also use the AI Sunstrobe, which is more masks. I'm gonna use the simpler version for this and just put this on. Let's watch what this does. So you can see that it throws the masks on. And so this throws a simple group of masks on. Now, let's say I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, it looks good, but I need to tone down that background more, that background more. This is kind of what I showed you in last week's video where we can now use curves. And the ability to use curves in these layers is really powerful. So I showed you in last week's video how you could take a background layer and adjust it and kind of do the roll off. I've built that in into a really balanced preset here. Let's do the A1 background fade. And you can see how it just changed. The background layer was already there. It didn't have to build a new one because I had added it with a previous speed mask. If it wasn't there, it would have been built. Now, what it did is it just toned that, that background even more. And the beauty, and this is why another reason you should be doing more and more things in presets, even if you're making your own, because there's so many crappy presets and internet marketers selling this kind of stuff, I see a lot of stuff like, oh, it's just presets. Presets are stupid. You should be doing it manually. The thing is in Lightroom, you actually get more features by using presets. So if, if you want, make your own, right? If you're like opposed to buying presets and tools and things like that, but you need to be using these. I can actually go up here now because I applied this speed mask as a preset and I can just quickly turn it up or down. Now, I don't wanna push it all the way to here because we get that unnatural look, right? So I can go down, I can go up. But the point is I'm getting this nice balance of this. Here, let's go to another photo and you can see this one again has no masks. I'm gonna go to this A1 Cine Mist just to give you guys an example of also this idea of just using one layer instead of separating all of them out, which is not bad by the way, but sometimes just a clean, simple layer like this is all you need. And the beauty is just turn it up and down, right? So here's nothing. Here's, you know, 50 and here's 150. Maybe I don't want to go that far, but what I tried to emulate here with the settings of this mask is kind of like using a mist filter on the lens where you're kind of softening things down and getting a little bit better control. The thing is, this doesn't just work for portraits. So let's say we have this coffee, right? Here. Here's a photo of a latte I took, and it's kind of got these lights and bokeh in the background. It looks cool, but I want to emphasize the cup a little more. I'm going to go back to that A1 background fade. That's the background fade I showed you how to make in the video last week, and all this does is put it into a mask, right? And you notice what's happening. We're kind of doing an a fall off curve here, where it's dropping the highlights and the contrast a bit. And as I turn it up, it's gonna do it more. And it's combining that with a little bit of exposure settings and things like that on this background mask here. What that does is it's allowing me to emphasize. If you guys have ever been to one of my workshops, and if you haven't, you definitely wanna to go to my site and check out my free Shadow Hackers live workshop, because a lot of what you perceive in tone and the brightness of your subject is actually controlled by the brightness of what's around it. So if your background, so if your background is really modeled, it has bright spots and dark spots, not only is it distracting, but if the contrast it creates with your subject, it can make your subject actually feel too light or too dark. So balancing that 
is really important. Here's another one here, right? I've showed you this before, how here's the raw file. It was, it's a bit harsh, it's a bit tough. I've showed you in other videos how I use like a Portra recipe from Filmist and how using that kind of a process, using F curves and highlight fall off and things like that can really balance out the tone in this. But the background here is still a little bit intense. Now I could do a great big combo mask over here from Elegance that put 12 masks on and it would look good, but sometimes you want a little subtlety. And so I'm gonna do that same thing. I'm gonna go and put that background fade curve and look what this is doing here. Okay, here's zero and here's 100, too much, but you see what's happening. As I turn this up, I'm just gradually toning this down. And of course you can go over here, you can say, hey, I want the curve, but I don't wanna mess with the exposure. And you could zero that exposure out. But by adjusting this, what I'm getting now is a more balance between the subject and the background. So now I could exit masks and just turn the exposure of the whole thing up or down, but I'm balancing out so that that background element doesn't become a huge distraction. And that is really important. Another thing I've done is I've put a subject specific F curve. You may have seen my F curve video here on the channel and why it's better than the S curve. But now that we can do curves and layers, you can build a curve like that and save it as a speed mask. So here's an example of how I did that. I did the background curve and let's look at our curves again. And you can see there's the background curve. I'm just gonna add one more individual curve and that's the subject F curve. So this is adding the F curve only to the subject right here. And again, I can turn this up or down. I'm just gonna turn it up just so the skin is kind of softening and we don't have that punch too much contrast of too much contrast in the face and those specular highlights because we have that sun coming in on the subject. So part of the way you should build speed masks is not only to quickly let you build groups of masks or individual masks like I did with these new masks in Elegance 4.6, but it's also to remind you to try certain things because if you're always doing everything manually, just like with develop presets, you're not gonna try the formulas in the same way. I've already used masks on this boudoir style portrait to soften the skin and make everything nicer. And it looks pretty good, but I might actually say, no, let's go a little bit further than that and actually do the background fade mask and let's throw that in there. So what I've done here is I've toned down that background even more. And of course I can determine, okay, how much do I want? I don't want to take too much contrast out. I can still play with my sliders manually and I would encourage you to do that. But what it lets me do is separate that subject even more. A lot of times, especially if you're doing on location portraits or if you're doing like commercial product photography or something like that, like the latte, right? This can be really useful because rather than have to go in and individually select like we used to do and burn down those areas, you can quickly select that background. But instead of just doing what you probably do if you were working manually and just turning the exposure down, when you build it into a speed mask, you can have a very refined curve or something like that because it's not just about turning down exposure. It's about balancing out contrast highlight and shadow so that that background is less distracting, which allows your subject to come forward. And that is actually what's really important. And if you do it that way, instead of just turning exposure up and down, you get a more natural result where your subject doesn't just look cut out of your mask because you're mixing things around in a more subtle way. If you use Elegance, definitely download this update and it's gonna do the heavy lifting for you. You can just apply it and go whenever you want. But if you're someone who's making your own presets and speed masks, definitely you wanna be implementing these techniques because they work really good with these new curve features that we're seeing now. All right, you guys, I hope you found this useful. I'll put some extra links in the comments. Please like, subscribe, and follow along for more of these kind of tips, and we'll see you next time.